thank you for relationship, Lord. Thank you for intimacy, sweet Lord. Thank you, Lord. Lord, break whatever you need to break today by your power by your power lord change whatever needs to be changed today so we could reach relationship so we could reach intimacy with you so we can know you as the real living powerful god lord do what you know to do in jesus name through the power of the holy spirit amen Amen. Hallelujah. Wow. Wow. If you're able to, you may be seated. The Lord is in this place and he just loves us so, so much. He loves you no matter what age you are, no matter what background you're from. Whether you live far or close, whether it's the first time or you've been here for years, God loves you so, so much. I just feel the love of God all over this place. Just feel the love of God all over this place. There's some wonderful people with us today, praise the Lord. Just going to name them quickly so we could recognize you and and, and greet you. We've got Merlin Cruz with us today. Hallelujah. God bless you. God bless you. God bless. All right. Carolina Torres is also here. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And Pamela Reyes. Hallelujah. God bless you. Okay, they're waiting somewhere. Praise the Lord. God bless you. God bless you. Everyone else that's here has been here more than once and we welcome you too to the house of the lord some people yeah give it to the lord give it that it means something it, the bible says clap unto the lord all ye people you know many must think you know those people they, they these girls sing good these musicians are good but man they, they, they're really radical really radical that's right some people may say we're crazy, and I just always say, I'm crazy. I'm crazy for Jesus. I'm crazy for Jesus because I know what he's done in my life. Hallelujah. Listen, just a reminder, and we greet those that are online. God bless you. Be touched by the word of God and by this worship may reach your homes and wherever you may be. Just want to remind you that our gift uh, offerings to the Lord and tithing basket is in the rear towards the last bench there right in the middle drop off your tithes and offerings or you could give online those that have never done it you got to put some information there after that is literally just a click away by putting a dollar sign and you could put whatever and send it and you get an email and a text back confirming super duper quick and I thank those that are give to the house weekly and monthly. You guys are just awesome and we honor you because you get it. You know, in this house, we don't make it law and we don't make it a bylaw or, a, or, or a, uh, a law, I guess is the word, to give. Because I think the word is sufficient, you know, and we understand, we understand that giving comes back to us in many ways. Not just financial, in many ways. It's called open doors, hallelujah. There's people that may not come to the house of the Lord regularly, but understand these facts. Because this week I got an offering from a client of mine, client of mine, who said, yo, Abe, I saw your church was an anniversary. I saw the posts. I said, yeah, we had a great time, man. He said, hold on. And he wrote me a check in the name of his restaurant and said, I just want to bless you because I know you're doing something significant here in this region. So we honor the God for that. If someone would be so nice, my ushers disappeared. If someone could just take that to the back, I'll forget later and take it home with me. Amen. God is really, really good. Really, really good. I want to talk to you. We're going to go right into this understanding Thursday. Hi, whoever was online Thursday, we had a wonderful time. Amen. Did we get blessed? I know I was blessed. Amen.
we're learning and we're growing on Thursdays. This Thursday we'll come go back to praying, to, to go on prayer mode and pray on the conference call Thursday at 7.30. And like usual, we are here at 2 o'clock every Sunday afternoon as the Lord permits this wonderful blessing of congregating. What a blessing it is. Seeing you guys and seeing, I know there's smiles behind those masks. No, there is. You can see by the eyes. I got little tiny chinky eyes, but, you know, when you have like round eyes, you know, you like see people smile with their eyes, with their forehead, you know. We love you guys and we bless you for being here. Amen. But there's a word today and I'm, I, I need to get into this because I'm so excited about it. You know, we sang and, and, and manifest led us into an incredible presence of God. The Lord is still here. Okay, what happens is it's a conversation. We sing to him and give him offerings of praise and worship. And then God takes a break and says, let me talk back. Let me talk back. Let me talk back because I'm so excited. I need to tell you something. Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And you guys understand that we've taught many times. And we've mentioned so many times in this place that God, God, our Lord, I'm going to go into teaching mode for a few minutes. God, our Lord, hallelujah, is really interested in three things from us as his children three things is what he expects of you and i our faith our obedience and our worship that's about it if someone tells you or declares to you how difficult it is to be a believer to be a christian how challenging it is to serve the lord that's a lie from the devil because what he really asks is to be in relationship with us. And who does not want to be in a relationship with the almighty God, the king of kings, and the Lord of lords? And if we break it down and simplify, all he asks for us is our faith, amen, our obedience, and our worship. So let's cherish what God wants to say today, because there's a miracle that's going to be unpacked today for some of you. There's a miracle that's been on hold. There's a miracle that ha has been a little bit like wrapped up or locked up. And God is giving keys today to unlock the miracle that you have been worshiping God for and waiting on God for. Hallelujah. I want to share today about a woman. Women I tell you, boy, what would be the church today without women? Did you know that 67% of evangelical church members are women in America? 67%. You know that there were women that were prophets in the Old Testament. There were women that preached the word in the New Testament. There were women that were leaders, okay? So when they tell you that women can't preach, well, man, maybe if you just step up and preach the word day in and day night, God will then put you in the position of authority in the kingdom. But since God is so interested in sharing this, he'll use women as well as men to lift his name up high. Hallelujah. There's a woman in Matthew chapter 15. I want to speak today about God's definition of greatness. How many like sports here? How many like sports? That's it. Good. A couple of women raised their hand. Nice. For a few years, there's been a debate of the GOAT, greatest of all time, in modern times. And some people who say in the NBA is now LeBron and others still say, uh-uh, it's still Michael Jordan. And I'm old school and I saw him play and I saw him rip my team to shreds game after game after game. But there's a debate of who's the greatest. I still think it's Michael Jordan and I could probably prove it to you through statistics. But what makes a person great? But more importantly, what makes a person great in the eyes of God Almighty? Let's go to Matthew 15, 21. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Leaving that place, Jesus 
withdrew to the region of Tyrene and Sidon. A Canaanite woman from the vicinity came to him, from that vicinity came to him, crying out, Lord, son of David, have mercy on me. My daughter is demon-possessed and suffering terribly. Jesus didn't answer a word. So his disciples came to him and urged him, send her away, for she keeps crying out after us. I'll paraphrase. Let's get rid of the annoying chick. Let's get out of this. She's disturbing the flow. She keeps on, she's so inappropriate. She's so inappropriate. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of Israel. Verse 25, that woman came and knelt before him. Lord, help me, she replied. I need for you to understand this. 2,000 years ago, this was a very, very, very male-dominated world. Society was dominated by men. Women were not allowed to be educated much, if at all. In matter of fact, most women that knew how to read and write was because their husbands taught her at home. There was no schooling for women. There were second-class citizens in society back in these days. Women were not allowed to speak to other men in public, only to their husband. Check that one out. Homemakers and child raisers were their biggest accomplishment. In matter of fact, I've said this before, the more children you had, the more successful you were, had, you were in that society. Isn't that something? Now, ladies, I'm really happy and so glad that Jesus came and broke that mold and that curse in the name of Jesus. Right? Aren't we glad we serve the Lord? We see here that Jesus withdrew to a quiet place, a small town up north. Perhaps he was looking for a few hours of respite. He was tired, perhaps. I'm just saying this myself. It's not in scripture. Of preaching day in and day night, day and night, and healing people and touching people and, and, and being with people. And he says, I need a mental break. I need an I need a, a, a emotional break. I need a, a physical break. Does that sound familiar? And it says that he went and he left and trying to find a quiet place. He went to the suburbs. He went to a more, uh, a less busy area, okay? But yet the people knew who was there because he was being followed by people that were hungry for God. Hallelujah. He was also being followed by the know-it-alls. He was also being followed for those that wanted to point the finger and say, uh-huh, uh-huh, he's wrong. We got him. We got him. We got him. We got him. Let's destroy him now. He was followed by all types of people, but he was being followed. He was being followed. And here is Jesus in this situation, and a woman comes, a Canaanite woman, which is now a day present Syria, okay? This Canaanite woman comes, and she sees that Jesus is there, or she knew somehow that Jesus was in that vicinity and in that town, and smack in the middle of all the Jewish people, and smack in the middle of all those that are following Jesus for a plethora of different reasons of following Jesus. Here comes a woman with a very serious need. Here she is. She was a minority in this area. She was a woman. Her place was to do errands during the day and bring water to the house and clean clothes and do the dishes. But this is a woman, and let's look at closely at what she does here. For the Bible says, and we read that she cries out, Lord, son of David, have mercy on me. Lord, as you know, Lord means king. Lordship means that he is greater than we are. She did not call him like others, teacher. She did not call him rabbi. She did not call him anything else but Lord. And she comes to him and declares publicly, he is my Lord. He is my king. He is my savior. Blessed be the name of the Lord. She was not ashamed to say it for the Bible says she cried out, Lord have mercy on me. Declares it publicly where nowadays 
everyone, just about everyone, is ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Oh, I'll leave it there, Dave. Leave it there. Leave it there, Abe. Lord, Master, Ruler, you have the power. Regardless of those people around her, she publicly declares where she stands with Jesus. She knew it was a risk. She knew she's an outsider. She knows that she's a woman. She knows that she shouldn't be speaking in public. She knows she shouldn't be interrupting the discourse. She knows that she's taking a calculated risk, but she also know, knows who Jesus is. She was not looking at him as a healer, but as Lord. She was not looking at him as a prophet. Give me a word, Lord. I need a word, Lord. Speak to me, Lord. She's looking at him as Lord. She declares him Lord, son of David. Publicly recognizing him as the weighted Messiah. As many of those that followed him still question, could he be or can't he be? Maybe he is. I doubt that he is. Why this guy? Look how he dresses. Look what town he's from. Look at his, his, his background. Why him? What synagogue? What university did he go to? What, I mean, the dude could speak. That's one thing. The dude, man, this guy could speak. I mean, my hair is stand up. I don't know about this dude. But they're following him. This woman was not following her. She's from another town, another area. But by faith, just looking at him, she opened up her faith realm and seen what he had to say. She looked and heard of what he has done in the past and opened her faith realm and say, this is the man that the Jews have been waiting for, but he is my Lord as well. Oh, son of David, your lineage has been prophesied. Your lineage has been declared in scripture. In scripture, I'm declared you're the one. I'm declared you're the savior. I'm declaring you're the one that they doubt. I believe, blessed be the name of the Lord. Many don't get their breakthrough. Many don't get their miracle simply because they're too busy analyzing, too busy looking at books and marking things down and questioning what has been said. And too many question their prayer and question their faith and question their attitude with God. And they question all, all to all self-analyze everything. Hallelujah. But this woman didn't go there to hear a sermon. This woman didn't come to hear a good preaching. This woman didn't come to hear a good song. She came to meet her Lord, the Messiah of the world. Hallelujah. Great faith she had. For she declares, have mercy on me. Oh, you know how many people... It's 2020, 21st century in modern times. Their lives are falling apart. Their lives are holding on by the threads as thin as a needle. Everything is wrong. Everything is a mess. Everything is, is, is screwed up. You look around to the left and it's bad news. And to the right is bad news. And, and, and they're having so much trouble but cannot find themselves saying, Lord, have mercy on me. Their pride is too big. Their egos are too big. They're too hard-headed to say, Lord, have mercy on me. And here's this lady of great faith declaring she has a need, and it wasn't even her need. She took risk for a loved one. She stood in the gap for a loved one that was falling apart. She wasn't even the one falling apart and declares publicly, I have, my family has a need. That's taboo, 2020 Christianity. 
I ain't say nothing. Don't tell the pastor nothing. Everything needs to seem fine and dandy. Our house is fine and dandy. Our, our children are fine and dandy. So stay fine and dandy. And let's see what happens in two years, in three years, in five years. Because you have not submitted your pride and your ego to the God who is your Lord. Savior is there as she came. Okay, so she was daring. She had guts. She was saved. What made her great? What made her great? She was a woman of great faith. She cries out, my daughter's suffering terribly. She knew exactly the situation, declares the problem publicly. Nowadays, we don't even want to say when we have a back pain. Eh, pastor's too busy. Eh, that's, too, that's, that's nothing but a cop out. Cop out. If a church is a hundredfold, you're probably pastoring 30 people. If a church is 500fold, you're probably pastoring 110 people. Everybody else is just walking in and out, doing whatever they want and coming in and out. Don't tell me what to do. Don't tell me what time to come. Don't tell me when to pray. Pride. But people of great faith, how to get to greatness of people that have a humble heart. That when we need to throw ourselves on the floor before God, we throw ourselves on the floor. Men, when we need to cry and snots are coming out and we got to run to the bathroom to get tissue because we want to be inundated in the presence of God. That's not a woman thing. That is a Christian thing. That is a relationship thing. Men, learn to cry out to God. Son of David. It's my daughter. She's all messed up, man. She's suffering terribly. The devil got her. The devil got her. That's what demon possession means. Devil got her. And we see here that Jesus didn't answer a word. I need for you to understand today that this woman took a risk. She risked her life. She risked her reputation. She risked everything. Ridicule. Rejection, public humiliation, she risked it all. But people of great faith put others ahead of themselves. Don't put circumstances and personal desires and hopes above the needs of, of spiritual needs and the needs of others. People of great faith learn to cry out to God and say, Lord, I need your help. She knew it was the only way for her breakthrough. Her Lord, the son of David. Many times we're in the midst of the glory of God right in this place. Right in your church if you're watching me. You're in the middle of the glory of God in this place. Just like we were a few minutes ago and we still are right now. It's that God manifests in different spheres. The glory of God is present, and we're still the same person. We don't cry out to when he's present. Think about that. His presence means he's present. And we don't cry out our needs to him. I'll do it at home in my bed. I'll do it when I pray. I always pray 645 to 655. I'll mention it to God then. This woman went after the presence of God. He's in this town, that's where I'm going. He's going down that road, that's where I'm going to be. I will have my encounter with my Lord. This woman had great faith. I'm here today to tell you that there is a battle for your answer. There is a battle for your breakthrough. There is a battle for your healing. There is a battle for your happiness. There is a battle for your satisfaction. And Jesus right here and right now, he's here to say, here I am. Just cry out and let me know what you need. 
So she did the best she can. Silence. <laughs> Silence. I want you to position yourself in this woman now. She's crying out, Lord, help me. She publicly says her issue, her problem, her situation, which is quite embarrassing, by the way. And all she heard were crickets if it was at night or a few birds chirping if it was during the day. She looks around. Oh, boy. For you that ain't Puerto Rican or Hispanic, que me tía papa y su tatita. Really stuck her foot in her mouth now. Silence. But silence turns into something much worse when other people are telling you, be quiet. That didn't work. Your prayers don't work. Be calm. You're crying out, don't work. You're just an emotional mess. That don't work. For his own inner circle, his own disciples, his own followers were telling him, shut up, girl. You're not supposed to be here anyway. Why don't you take a step to the back and let us men run the show? Silence can get progressively worse, but silence is a test to our faith. Silence is a test that every believer must have to go through eventually. We're waiting for nothing. My daughter's probably going to get worse. We pray. You see, we pray for nothing. Nothing changed. Nothing happened. We sang some good songs, presence of God. We go home. Everything's the same. We fa I even fasted. We fasted. We fasted for nothing. Nothing changed. Everything's the same. We try to be consistent. We try to seek God. Silence. How do you react in your silence? season do you give up do you turn around and head home or are you great like this woman <laughs> my god are you great like this woman in this house god speaks and this is a prophetic house in this house there are people developing a prophetic a prophetic aura i'm not going to say there's pro prophets in the house that's very a big commitment there are people that have a prophetic calling in this house that need to nurture and develop it and take it a bit more serious. And God speaks. But what happens after God speaks? What happens when God tells you something? What happens when God touches you? What happens? Isaiah 55, 11, John. So my word that goes out of my mouth it will not return to me empty. But I, this is God speaking, I will accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose for what I have sent it. So when God speaks, there may be silence, but he's going to do what he promised he's going to do. There may be a season of silence, but God is going to do what he's promised you he will do. There may be a, si a season of silence, but if God said you're going to be healed, by God, you're going to be healed. If God says you're blessed, you are blessed. If God says you're favored, you are favored. Hallelujah. Let's believe what God has said, although we don't see it in the present. It shall truly come to pass. Jeremiah 33, 3, call to me. And I always say this. I love the King James Version because it says, don't know why, unfortunately, they changed the word. But the King James Version text says, cry out to me and I will answer you and tell you great things. That you do not understand and you will see. We come and we are his presence, but we must learn to cry out. We must learn to get his attention. We must learn to put the barriers of pride and insecurity and doubts to the back burner and serve the Lord in spirit and in truth. Because today could be a day for your miracle. 
faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. And I declare today that your faith is growing right now. I declare right now that your faith is exploding in you. That you're going to have tenacity. That you're going to have the wherewithal. That you're going to have the bravery. That you're going to have the things that, have, that has held you down. And you're going to stomp on them and get rid of them. And say, for me and my house, we shall serve the Lord. I was watching the late, great evangelist R.W. Shamba. I'm going way back with him. R.W. Shamba, one of my heroes. When I, was, I would get cassette tapes and send money to a P.O. box in Tyler, Texas. They would send me a cassette of preachings. I was 15, 16 years old. Cassettes of preachings. I would hear them in AM radio. The other day he said on a video... He says, I just met a man. I just met a man who was successful, a college graduate, master's degree. He grew in his company, and he became a weekend alcoholic. Every Friday night, hanging out, drinking. Saturday night, hanging out and drinking. Sunday nights, hanging out and drinking. This was a married man with two kids, wonderful wife, and the drinking was no longer enough. He wasn't feeling satisfied. And he felt self-indulged. And he felt that it was the right thing because I work hard. I work hard. I'm entitled. I'm entitled to have a good time. I'm entitled to have some fun. He started dabbling in, in drugs. Started doing cocaine. To make a long story short, this great job, this wonderful job, paying him almost a quarter of a million dollars a year. He was put on probation and said, you need to meet, you need to change. The way you're dressing, your hair's out of place, you look messed up, particularly on Monday mornings, what is wrong with you? Make a long story short, he lost his job. He went home and started doing drugs in the house. And his wife threw him out and said, you leave this house, my kids, my children, our children cannot see this. He was thrown out of the house. This is a man that was making a half a million dollars a year living in a hotel. And in the hotel, the spirit of depression came upon him so big. It came upon him so strong. He felt he couldn't stop. I messed up. I screwed up. I destroyed my life. I destroyed my kids. I destroyed my wife. I destroyed my career. I messed up. I'm falling apart. And R.W. Shamba says, and this man says in that hotel room, he went out in the money, the last money he had for drugs, he bought a gun. He bought an illegal gun in the street, and he took it to the hotel, and he put two bullets in it, and he started messing around and said, I'm, I'm going to end this. It's not worth it. I'm never going to get another job. All I do is want to stay high. I'm never going to get amount to anything. I'm too old. I'm already in my 40s. I can't believe I started this so late. I never did drugs in my, in my teen years. I started this when I was 31. Why, why am I so stupid? Why am I so messed up? Let's end this. I need to end this. And he cocks the gun and puts it to his forehead in this hotel. And then he says, wait, let me put on the TV. Because then somebody's going to hear the, the, the noise of the bullet, of the gun. And then they're going to run into there. And with my luck, they'll save me. They'll save me with a hole in my head. So I'm going to make sure this works out. Can I do something right? Maybe suicide I'll do right. And he turns on the TV. And it was on TBN. And there is R.W. Shabbat on <laughs> On the, on the television. And the first thing he says when he grabs his gun is, don't turn that dial to another channel for God is dealing with you right now. And he said, what? what's going on? You got to be kidding. This is a church. God, what are you kidding? And all of a sudden, the spirit of discernment gets on the evangelist. He says, there's a man in a hotel room who's about to commit suicide. And I send a word of hope. And I send a word to you that you shall prosper. And you shall preach the word. And you shall grow. And you shall come back to your family. Your family shall come back to me. And this man dropped the gun and said, my God. got into the car. Ten years later, he's in an evangelistical campaign as an usher. And he tells the evangelist, you remember me? He says, no, I've never met you. You remember once when you said on television, blah, blah, blah. He says, I vaguely remember. He said, My family's fine. My kids are fine. My wife took me back. I haven't done drugs since the day that you called me out in public and said there is hope for me in Jesus. And he said, 
preacher. I have a good job. God has blessed me so much. I'm an usher here. Your campaign is the least I could do. I'm a deacon in my church. And the job I have, I am now making a half a million dollars a year. God doubled for his trouble. The only thing, and those that know R.W. Shambot told him, why didn't you tell me sooner? I would have testified about it 10 years ago. That is the God that we serve. There's a miracle for someone in this place. My job and my assignment today is to open up your faith. Connect you with God and open up your faith. This woman took a risk. Zippo, silence, quiet. Back to the routine. One more teaching. Let's see a few more miracles. There's a couple of wheelchair people here. Look, there's a lunatic over there. Jesus will take care of that. But not her. Insignificant. Nah. She's all talk. No, nah. What was she going to do? Then Jesus finally speaks. You think the silence was difficult. What happens when God tells you something strong or negative? <laughs> you think silence was difficult and challenging. Jesus finally addresses him, her and says, I only come for the lost sheep of Israel. The challenge and the testing of silence and now the challenge and testing of waiting. My God, you're so good. How clear can God speak? God is telling her, I came for the Jews, not you people, apparently. What God is really telling her is, may not be your time yet. Because God came for everybody. I came to save the world. But the Bible is very clear that he came to the Jew first and then the Gentile. And the Bible is even clear when it says, for the Jews rejected him and have gone to the nations. I didn't come for you. What happens when we have to play the waiting game for our answer? Why are there so many people not congregating right now because they haven't gotten their answer? Why so many people have given up and are out there wasting their time out there where life is right now in a balance? In a balance. Where God is judging humanity as we speak. God is judging America as we speak and deciding what am I going to do with these people? in this nation. There's people playing with God in the worst possible time. I'm not good enough, Lord. I believe in you. I serve you. I'm not good enough for an answer, Lord. Is that what you're trying to say? For test number two is waiting on the Lord. For he shall renew your strength. It doesn't say wait on the Lord and he'll give you every single thing you ask for. Let the prosperity weirdos say that. I preach this. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So she's in a crossroads right now. Oh, I feel the presence of God. She's at a crossroads. Listen carefully. Now it's serious because she's at a crossroads for her spirituality and her relationship with God and in a crossroads for her daughter. 
Because if she turns back and goes home, her daughter stays the same, and her life spiritually will never be the same because she'll be carrying the spirit of rejection forever. There are people that are carrying a spirit of rejection and not take, break hold, and I'm going to show you how you can do it right now. For this woman did not reject what she heard. The Bible says that she got closer to Jesus, threw herself on the ground, and said, Lord, help me. How do we do it? How do we live with the test of faith? How do we live with the test of waiting? How do we live now with the test of rejection? How is it we get closer to him? We worship more. We lift his name higher. We lift our hands stronger. We jump a little higher. We sing for more gusto. We pray and cry out louder. That is the secret of this woman who was a great woman of faith. Hallelujah. Test number three. Oh, Lord, help me. I'm getting closer. I'm right on top of you now. I kneel before you. I'm giving you praise and worship. And Jesus replied, it's not right for me to take the bread of the children of Israel and give it to the dogs. Pastor, what's going on? This poor woman. Oh, this poor woman. Now Jesus is insulting her, is that it? And Jesus is belittling her, is that it? No, no, no. See, for the Jews were so, so, had such racial tension in their own life, they called all Gentiles dogs. Everyone. So what Jesus is doing is, I'm going to position myself where these bozos think they're right, so she could teach these morons a lesson. I don't have to do it. She will. Because Jesus knows all things. It wasn't the connotation of calling her a dog. What Jesus was showing was all those around her, particularly those that were telling her to be quiet, particularly those that were pulling her to the side and shh, dignify, relax, take a chill pill. Girl, you're too loud particularly those religious fanatics. God is saying, this is your concept. I'm going to show you kingdom concept now. Because whether in the world you may feel you're a minority, and in the world you may feel you're not getting by, and in the world you feel that you, got, you need government assistance, and in the world for a season, God willing, for a season, for a season. That's not a lifetime thing, by the way. It's for a season. That what the world has to say and the racial conflicts of today where we think that we're better than someone because of the color of their skin or we think we're more superior because of our education or our background or where we happen to live. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And we think in our concepts are of superiority because we, but we are all mankind and we all need the blood of Jesus and your blood and my blood and the white man and the black man. Our blood is red. This is the statement of the statements and one of the greatest statements of all scripture where she's on her knees worshiping God and didn't get up and say, check this dude out. It's like everybody else. God is not like everybody. God's concepts are not the world's concepts. Even though some churches want you to believe that. But Lord, even the dogs. And by the way, original Jewish version says the puppies. So she actually said, but Lord, even the puppies get the crumbs from under the table. This is what made this woman great. 
She didn't look at things the way the world looked at her. She didn't look at things in her present situation. She looked at things in a spiritual connotation because this was the kingdom of God where everyone is equal. But Lord, they may think that, but I'm here to receive whatever you give me, whatever blessing, whatever open door, whatever healing, whatever miracle, whatever it is, I'm here. Jesus said, woman, and again, going back to the original Gene King, G James, King James Version. Jesus says, oh, woman, I love him. Why did they remove that old? Oh, woman, your faith is great. Oh, woman. Now that's a woman of God. That is a human of God. Regardless of the situation, she persevered and pushed forward. She didn't go on a spiritual hunger strike. She didn't get angry. She didn't blame the religious for, oh, the church, the church, the church did this, the church did that, the church didn't do this, the church didn't do that. The church said, it's between you and God, me and God. Jesus knew as the God that knows everything, knew he was going into that town because this woman was coming. He knew that although tired, he needed to have an encounter with this woman of great faith. I'm going to tell you more. Jesus was looking forward to meeting this woman because she was a woman of great faith. And when Jesus said, oh, woman, your faith is so great. Bible says at that moment not weeks later not therapy later not rehabilitation physical rehab later at that moment no psychiatrists no pills at that moment at that moment the girl is at home and Jesus is here with her at that moment the child or the young lady was free of her affliction. She was healed at that moment. She came for a miracle and got a miracle in that moment. She went through the steps, she went through the challenges, and she received her breakthrough at that moment. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Can I ask you to stand up with me and close your eyes? It's the level of your faith that is going to dictate how far you go. This woman of great faith never walked away. She didn't get mad. She didn't post a complaint on Facebook. Eyes closed and meditating. Amen. She didn't call a friend to complain about how bad she was treated at the church or how bad she was treated even by Jesus. What she knew was to get closer and closer to a higher level. My God. She knelt down before him, rejecting the rejection she had reached and received. Listen carefully. She rejected the rejections of people. She rejected the rejections of those that were speaking negative in her life. Maybe her husband said, why are you going all the way over there for? You have no place there. You're a woman. Why are you traveling to another town for? Why are you, this, this girl is a lost case. And all the rejection and all the negativity, she put it in a back pocket and said, I am going to find my master, my Lord, my Savior, and I will ask him and cry out for what this family needs. Nothing stops great faith. Nothing, 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 nothing. Nothing. Nothing will stop your faith. As it's growing today, let it explode. Let it explode in you as you hear the word. For the Lord says the, the season of rejection is over. The season of silence is coming to an end. The season of racial bias at work, the unfairness is ending. I'm going to change the hearts of the people. 
the season of insults are over, just call to God and cry out to him. She left the circumstances behind, the background, her inferiority complexes behind. She left whatever discouragement that she could have gotten behind. And I will follow what I have been put in my heart to do. No matter what you're going through presently, you need faith to receive the miracle. So as you close your eyes and you talk to the Lord for the next 60 seconds, what would Jesus say about your faith? What would Jesus say about your faith? What would Jesus say? Lord, impart this word to our spirit so our faith may grow. But God is looking for people of great faith to deposit glory, to deposit his move, to deposit revival, to deposit answers and breakthroughs and healings. Oh, woman of great faith, your petition has been granted. We must never forget that in the book of Hebrews, but without faith, it is impossible to please God. God expects faith. God demands faith. But faith grows as you walk tightly with God in your relationship with him. Never forget. She went to where the presence of Jesus was. We need to go to the presence of God. She cried out her need. In spite of all the obstacles and embarrassments, we need to cry out to God. She didn't let others deter her. We can't let people slow us down. She stood strong and didn't waver in the silent season. She stood strong and didn't waver in apparent rejection. She worshiped more and got closer. She never doubted and got her breakthrough. How many here are in need of a breakthrough? How many are here are in need of a breakthrough, of an answer from God, of a miracle from the Lord? I want to add this that the Spirit of the Lord downloaded to me last night. The Bible says at that very moment, this child, daughter, was healed. How did they know? Think about that. No fax, no email, no smartphones. Not even a telephone, not even a landline. How did they know? That's in the scriptures. She had to come back. She came back. She came back from her region and said, Jesus, this is my daughter. Look what you have done. That's what God is about to do with you. You're going to come back and testify of the greatness of God. You're going to come back, and I continue to say it because it's in my spirit. There's going to be a line of people here. This microphone is a symbol to the Lord. I have, I have directed them to put this here every Sunday. And every time I look at it, I say, God, there'll be a line of people here declaring what God has done this week in their life. You'll see. You'll see. It's for his glory. It's not for a church's glory. It's not for my glory. Amen. <laughs> it's for God's glory. The more glory we give him, the more he does. So if anyone 
is brave enough like this woman. This is going to be symbolic. No one's going to, unless the Holy Ghost dictates. I'm going to ask you as we sing to the Lord to take a step of, of faith. I need an usher, a deacon, if they can remove this, please. And you're going to come here and every step you take is a declaration that you believe God. I 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 believe God. Every step until you get here is you declaring, I believe God for my breakthrough, for my necessity, for my issue in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.